first episode of Practical Living with Martinique, the show that actually offers practical advice from professional life coaches. I'm so glad that you all are tuned into the show today. I'm so excited to have Marsha and D. Renee and her beautiful hand. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, you ladies, because this is our first show, I would love for you guys to just um, tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself, um, your area of a specialty, and just who you are. Starting with you, um, Marsha. Um, so my name's Marsha Apizak, and I'm a life coach, and I specialize in working with women who are going through life changes, uh, changes that they want to make in their lives or unexpected um, changes that have happened that, that are, are throwing them a little bit for a loop and they're trying to move forward. Um, it's typically, a lot of times it's, they've been laid off from a job or a divorce or a relationship change, something unexpected, or that they're looking to make a change in career or relationship status. So um, we were, I work with women um, doing that. Great, great. All right, D. Renee. Okay, I am D. Renee. I am the transformation specialist. I support women with overcoming obstacles so that they can elevate in life in business. And as a transformational life coach and a licensed therapist, that means that I support women with rediscovering who they are, increasing their self-esteem, their self-worth, eliminating negative and dispelling limiting beliefs, in addition to helping them to be able to walk fully in their purpose and so that they can create the life that they desire to live. Excellent. Thank you guys so much. And I'm so excited that this is our first show. Um, and the reason why I decided to have this first topic, because I know so many people, um, and when I say so many people, so many people on Facebook um, <laughs> are actually creating goals for themselves, um, especially because it's the new year. And so I just wanted you all to really just have a realistic idea of what success is. Um, so that's why our topic today is defining success and how to find the resources you need in order um, to achieve that success. Now, because this is our first show, um, in order to make this show a success, I love involvement. I love feedback from you guys that's watching. Um, I would love for you all to um, post comments and ask questions. Um, this is a free resource for you all. Also, make sure you go ahead and share this video now. Um, share this with individuals that you feel um, could just steadily just have a hint that maybe they need a life coach <laughs> for 2019. <That's> right. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll never know. They just think it's a regular share. But honestly, this is really good information um, from two awesome um, professional life coaches. And all of their information is in the description box. So again, make sure that you ask questions. Make sure that you share this post right now. And we're going to have a really good show. Um, so... I know that you all have already told us um, who you are. So the first question that I have on the table is, uh, what are some self-sabotaging or unhealthy ways you've seen individual measure success? I can go first with that one. So some unhealthy, um, some unhealthy ways that I've seen, one, comparing yourself to other people. Um, that is a big no-no. Everybody else's journey, what someone else has, what someone else is building, what they're doing, that's their personal journey. You have to develop your own journey. Someone else's success and someone else's journey to success, that's their process. Everybody has their own process. You don't know what it took for that person to get to where they are. So it's very, very, very important, especially with social media. You know, everybody can look like millionaires on social media, but you don't really know that's truly how they really live, you know? So if please, just please do not compare yourself to other people. Work your own journey, walk in your own shoes and be your authentic self. That's good. I agree with everything <laughs> that D. Renee said, absolutely. And I'm glad you brought up social media because even uh, younger people, younger women, 
who see everyone posting on social media, everyone posts their, their best self, right? Um, on social media. And it's so easy to get caught up in that. And even if you're a professional with LinkedIn, everyone's career, everyone's going to present their best foot forward in LinkedIn for, for the, for the midlifers like myself, right? So it's very, it can be very overwhelming and intimidating. And, and we are each on our own journey. And the other thing that we do, um, it's common, it's natural, is we self-sabotage with our negative self-talk as well. Yeah. You know, the minute that we're afraid, you know, fear is, is part of life. And if we go down that cycle, that spin cycle down, it really keeps us stuck. And so it's so easy for us to say, well, I don't have the time and I don't have the money. And mm -hmm. one of the ways that, that I found helpful for myself and for others that I work with is how can you turn that around and ask the question, well, how can I make more time? How can I possibly, you know, make more money? If I'm feeling lonely, I'm lonely. Again, it's not uncommon to be lonely at certain times in our lives. Well, you know, how can I be unlonely? <laughs> how can I feel more fulfilled? So it's really shifting our mindset. That's good. That's good. Um, so now I know that you said that, you know, Social media can be a way that we compare ourselves to other. But do you also feel that that is a way that you can motivate yourself to see that person as a possible role model of how you want, you know, your life to eventually become? How do you have that balance with the two like that? Well, it's important to remember where you are in on your journey you know, and just stay focused on you. It's okay to admire people and their um, accomplishments and where they're going and what they're doing. It's okay to do that, but don't get caught up in all of that to where you lose focus of where you are, what you're doing and what you're trying to build. Mm -hmm. and, we're, and we're all very individual um, mm -hmm. beings, right? We're all very individual and one of the ways um, to, to keep that balance that D. Renee was saying is to understand our own values. And when we align with our own values and what's important to us, it brings the focus back in. So it's wonderful to be inspired um, by women in particular. Um, Michelle Obama's book was very inspiring, right? Uh -huh. And so she's a wonderful role model. But again, if you're trying to reach and, and go on someone else's journey, it is self-sabotaging, particularly if you're not in tune with what your values are and what's important to you. That's true, that's true. And I know that I was reading something how um, we are so materialistic. And I think that, you know, in that you can begin to purchase things to make it look like you have all of this success and you could yeah. be putting yourself in the poorhouse, you know, in the <laughs> midst of doing that. Um, yeah. trying to look a certain way and um, really just living a lie. Um, so how would you, as a life coach, define success? What's a healthy way to define success, you think? I think, I think success is individualized. Um, people define, this, define success based on their individual needs and based on their in, individual goals. You know, my goal might not be the next person's goal. So for me, it might be, okay, having the freedom that I desire to have in my business to where I can just run my business fully without having to go on a nine to five mm -hmm. or without having to work on a part-time job. That might be my success to where I have the money flowing in for my coaching and consulting business to where I don't have to worry about anything. I have financial freedom. I can come and go as I please. And that's, you know, that's my definition of success. That might not be someone else's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My definition of success is um, it changes over time. It evolves with me. Um, uh, I guess from a, from a big perspective, it's anything that aligns with my values. And depending on where I am in my life and where someone else is, that definition of success could change. So, you know, if you're in your first job, your definition of success may be different than when you're running a business or when you're looking to retire or if you're in a relationship change. So 
there's all different types of uh, definitions. They're individual. And I also think that I think that they change over time. And it's important when we set goals too to reach our success, however we define that, that, you know, big goals can be really big, but with life coaching, with any kind of coaching, you know, it's all about chunking that down. So you can have that one big goal that, that measures success for you, but there are little successes along the way as well that we have to remember, remember that that matters too. And that, that, you know, and failures along the way doesn't mean that they don't mean that you're not going to be successful. However, you choose to define that. Mm -hmm. Because well, some of the most successful people have failed their way into success. Mm -hmm. So it's that important to understand that if you have setbacks along the way, it doesn't mean that you failed. Mm -hmm. And the setbacks and the failure, which I don't think is a bad word. People are afraid of that word. We learn the most from our failures or from our setbacks, right? And so, yeah. and when we go through the journey, the process, we adjust and we swerve through and, and depending on what you want, um, that's okay. I mean, it's okay for all of us to swerve our way because life, life happens too. Absolutely. So, so realistically, let's say that a person has a goal of, let's say losing 20 pounds um, <laughs> by the end of this year. How do you feel that an individual should not look so much at the big picture of the 20 pounds, but how do they plan and achieve those small success, successes along the way? Because each day you need to be doing something in order to achieve that major goal or success. So your question was, how do they? How do work? they begin to plan and implement and achieve that major success of losing 20 pounds? Well, I would say that they would need to take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to focus on one thing at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself with trying to do too much at once. You know, doing things in small bites, okay. one step is eventually gonna get to the mile, but you have to take the one step first. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people get caught up in, in the big goals and the big step, but they sometimes have to scale back and they have to focus in on the small things that are kind of going on so that they will be able to you know, stay focused and meet their goals. Because sometimes if it's too big and too much at one time, then mm -hmm. it, it, it can become too overwhelming. True. And the other thing too, um, it, it's about consistency, right? So the way we stay consistent is exactly what D. Renee said, is that we, we set the goals where they're achievable, you know, little steps at a time. And that way we stay on track. The other thing too, um, I find helpful for myself as well as my clients is to, is to do some visioning and to think about what, what is it going to feel like to be lighter? How is that going to feel good to me? Why do I want to do that? Why is it, why is it important to me now? You know, and then also to think about what resources do I need to put in place to help me stay on track? So we're in a wonderful time now where, where there's, there are coaches, there are fitness, you know, fitness coaches, there's exercise videos, there's meditation. So really looking inside and saying, okay, this is what I want to accomplish. What things can I put in my place mm -hmm. that will, will set me up for success in my mind? And again, that's very individual. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to what um, Marcia said, I mean, accountability. Accountability is important for you to have. I mean, yeah. your accountability partners keep you on track. They keep you focused. They keep you, you know, encouraged when you're not about when you feel like you don't want to do it they push you they stretch you they encourage you so that's an also important given the example or any example or just like starting a business you know it's important to have accountability because sometimes you just don't want to sometimes you don't feel like it but having that other person there encouraging you pushing you to help you grow and learn is very important 
Definitely. And there's, and there's no, you know, we as women talk to our family and our friends and using coaching or any other modality where you don't have that emotional connection, there's no judgment. So when you backslide or you make a mistake, you know, it's, it's really uncovering why, what's going to make it better the next week. So as an accountability partner, you're working with someone, there's, there's no judgment, you know, because we're all human and part of moving forward is moving back sometimes. And then kind of looking at that strategically and thinking, okay, what's going to, what's going to prevent, you know, what can we put in place such that it's, it, we can make that goal next week from week to week. So as a life coach, do you guys have to sometimes act as an individual's accountability partner? That's very much part of the job. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's, I'm, yeah, we set goals week to week. Um, and actually it's the clients that set the goals. We just, as coaches, ask them a lot of questions to make sure that the, the goals are, are, are something that they want, that they feel they can achieve. I ask my clients, you know, what could get in the way of you achieving this from week to week? And then we review it and then move forward the next week. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I have accountability as a part of my coaching program because I feel like it's vitally important um, to their success in the program. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. So I know that we talked about resources. What should viewers do to find the resources that they need in order to become successful? Um, <laughs> let's see. So I hired a business coach. Okay. I hired a business coach. I think it's important for you to get someone who, whether it's a life coach, a business coach, whatever it is, any kind of coach that you feel that you need to take you to the next level, then you need to seek out the most qualified person that not only has the big, uh, you know, some people look at the materialistic things. You don't need to look at the materialistic things because people can go buy that every single day. You can go buy the purses, you can go buy the houses, you can go buy the red bottoms, you can go buy all this fancy stuff. But people need to look at the results. They need to look at the results that that person provide and the value that they're bringing to the people who they serve. Because a lot of people are out here doing um, our life coaches and some certified, some not certified. And we don't know what type of value are they're bringing to their, um, to their clients. What kind of transformation are they offering? Are they really providing transformation or they're just giving information? Are they really just putting on these big events just to look good? but there's no transformation at the end of it, you have to look at all of those things in order to be able to determine if that is someone that you feel is uh, fits your needs. Mm, okay. So, so um, before you answer, uh, Marcia, so D. Renee, are you saying, ask these individuals um, about their, like people that they've used already are you saying like as far as in like testimonies from whomever they're seeking? Correct. So yeah. if, if I say if I let's say that I use I saw your um, your mm -hmm. your business page and I say, mm -hmm. man, you know, I think I want to try out D. Renee, but I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. And I should ask you for somebody that has used your services before. Well, because client information is confidential, well, I'm a therapist at heart. I've been a licensed therapist for 15 years. So confidentiality is important for me. But your client should also be willing to give you testimonies. But the best part about what it is that I do is my, the transformational um, life coaching that I provide, I've been through it. Mm, okay. These are the steps. I use exactly what I did to get to where I am so that I can help other women. But I also use it and with my other clients, but I will ask for, you know, testimonies, but you so can't, I, I mean, it, go ahead. What was you about to say? No, I was just saying as far as in giving the client names that might be on a different level. I'm firm believer in confidentiality, but as far as in being able to have your clients to provide social proof and giving mm -hmm. testimonies, whether it's anonymous, some may choose to put their name and things like that out there, then that's important. Okay. Or have a client speak on your behalf. Okay. And I know that you mentioned that you had a business coach. Would you like to give her a shout out? Yes, I sure would. So, um, 
<laughs> my business coach, her name is Mia Reddick. She is the bomb.com. They call her the mom strategist, and she is absolutely amazing. And what makes her so great? What she provides transformation after transformation after transformation. I um I think I hired her back in September mm -hmm. and it has taken my business to another level. I had um, maybe two businesses before this. I wish I would have had a business coach back then. Mm -hmm. the, the information that she provides, the transformation that she provides, she has the testimony days upon days upon days you know, years upon years, she's been doing this for 15 years and mm -hmm. creating success, creating transformation, creating, you know, people helping you take your business from level one all the way to level 10. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's been absolutely amazing. I mean, every single night, I mean, you're constantly doing something. She's constantly giving you this. She's constantly giving you that. And those are the type of people that you want to work with because you want those people who care enough about you to give you enough value to get so that you can get the transformation that you desire to have in your life. That's good. That's good. Now, Marsha, same question, same question. What should viewers do to find the resources they need in order to be successful? I think, um, well, I think one of the things they can do is think about when they have had success in the past, what did they draw upon then, right? So um, a lot of it could be from the inside, determination, perseverance, but if they've used um, certain resources in the past and that's worked, start there. Um, in terms of coaching, it's a great resource as uh, are other things. Um, in terms of picking a coach, I agree with uh, Dee Renee, it's, it's wonderful to have that accountability partner, someone that you can brainstorm with and someone who's going to, to challenge you to go from step to step and, and, and recheck in with you in terms of what you define success as. And many times, you know, we talked about material things and is it the material thing or is it the feeling that you get when you have the material thing? Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of introspection as well. What, what are, you know, when someone wants to lose 20 pounds, well, well, why? You know, what's, what, why is that? And, and are there other ways in addition to weight that you can achieve that? Sometimes we have a goal and if we look sort of do a 360 around us, other things will pop up along the way, right? That we can work on. But in terms of uh, picking a coach, I mean, I offer a complimentary session. I encourage people to, many coaches do offer a, a free session where they can get to know the coach. You're gonna be working with this person you, it is confidential, but you are going to be sharing information and trusting this person to guide you, help guide you down your path. And so I encourage um, my clients or people that I talk to, to reach out to several coaches, because sometimes it's an energy that just feels right. There's, I mean, I'm certified and I've been coached and, and coach others. And I was in a very intensive training program, but it really comes down to that, you know, you want someone who's professional, but really, do you feel you can work with this person? Do you feel you can connect? Does this person inspire and motivate and challenge you and help you get to where you're going? And um, many of us pick doctors, you know, and we get a gut feel either way, Ugh, you know, I'm not really comfortable. I might find a different doctor. You know, it's not uncommon. You could have someone, you know, from an Ivy League school, but they're really, they're not really listening to you as much as somebody else. So I would employ that gut feel when you're looking for a person to connect with. And certainly there's all sorts of, there are books you can read. Um, you know, some people find yoga relaxing if they find that it's hard to focus on their eating because they're tense all the time. You know, there's, there's so many ways to approach it. And and again, we're in a place where we can use coaching as well as additional things um, to supplement our efforts moving forward. Definitely. And I know one thing that I had to really rely on sometimes um, with just finding resources in order to make my business successful was talking to my friends, mm -hmm. you know, because some of them have already utilized um, these individuals and just mm -hmm. reaching out to them and asking them, you know, who did you use to create such and such for you? Who did you use um, to, do, to do this? And mm -hmm. so I think that um, so many times we have people around us that have utilized these things that we do need in our life in order to 
um, become successful. But I think sometimes we're afraid to show that humility to say, I need help in this and what can I use or what should I do in mm -hmm. order to um, achieve this goal or become a success. The, 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 I just wanna make a comment about social media. It's so easy to say negative things about social media, but it's also really positive. We're using it right now to, ed, you know, to help educate people. But also um, social media gives us a wonderful way to network Definitely. in a big way. So that's how, I met, that's right. how we met and <laughs> yes. And, and um, you know, even from where I was trained, we have, we have Facebook groups where we can share and ask questions of each other, bounce questions off of one another as well. So when you find social media is wonderful because mm -hmm. you're sharing with people who may, you know, with people in common. And so, you know, when you put a lot of heads together, sometimes the most creativity comes up. You can leverage and then expand and then share back. And so it's very, it's a very collaborative, it's so easy now to find collaborative communities. Mm -hmm. So um, talk to us a little bit about setting realistic goals in order to su achieve success in one's life. Because I know I be making some lofty ones. I'm like, oh, Martinique, you're going to be making $60,000 by June. You know? And so, like, I set myself up for failure if I'm doing $100, $100 work per month. I think I'm going to get to my $60,000. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, I teach my clients because of the type of coaching that I do. I do transformational life coaching. And I work because of the type of clientele that I work with. I teach them about SMART goals. And, um, you know, SMART goals stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time specific. And I teach them about that only because for someone who is struggling with self-esteem and self-confidence, they need that reassurance that they can do this. Mm -hmm. So I teach them about SMART goals in order, so in realistic goals so that they can do that. So let me tell you what my coach told me. Mm -hmm. She said, to heck with SMART goals, you need to stretch as a business owner as an entrepreneur, you need those stretch goals that's going to make you uncomfortable when you think about them. Mm -hmm. Just like you just said about your $100 product, I guess, to try to reach your $60,000 goal. How, mm -hmm. many, how many of those products are you going to have to sell in order to reach your goal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have to set unrealistic goals as a business owner so that it can push you, so that it can stretch you, so that you can get to where you desire to be. Because it's nothing wrong with setting those baby steps in between there. But really, what is your overall goal? If your overall goal is to have $250,000 or make $250,000 in your business, mm -hmm. and you're selling a $49 product, how are you going to do that? If, if that's your goal for 2019, please tell me how many of those $49 products are you going to have to sell in order to be able to do that? You have to push yourself to think one outside the box and to stretch and go for those big goals and create products, create services, do those things that you might have been afraid to do, do those things that have been uncomfortable for you, just even thinking about it, just make you just want to just like crawl up in a ball and just be like, okay, I don't know. You know, you have to be able to do those things. And that's why accountability is a Im important in doing those things because you're, you need to have someone that's your ambition level above. That's your accountability part. And you can't have someone down there thinking, Lord, and you're like, girl, I don't think you need to do that. Or, you know, why don't you just focus on this? Or why don't you just focus on that? You know, don't worry about that. You have to have someone that's on your ambition level of, or above that can hold you accountable, that will push you to do that, and that can give you um, more encouragement, that can also offer advice on how you can get to the next level to achieve that goal. But don't you feel that, okay, if, it's, if the goal is set too high, that when you don't reach it, you become discouraged and then you like, the heck with this. I'm not doing this anymore. What is what is too high? That's based on your belief system. So you already think it in your mind that it's too high, so you're not going to achieve it. So you're already, if you don't think you're going to achieve it, then you're already not going to achieve it because you've already made up in your mind that it was too high for you to achieve. So therefore, your actions as a relate to those thoughts, 
and those feelings behind even trying to attempt to do it is is not going to happen. So what you're because saying? You just said, go ahead, because you just said what you just said is too high. So you more so feel like who is the person that's telling you that it's too high? If it's yourself telling you that it's that's too right. high, then you, I have to change my mindset to say, okay, I can do this and this is how it's going to be done. Absolutely. That's right. exactly what I'm saying. Because if you say this too high, I can't, I don't know. You, you're already defeated. You're already not going to achieve it because you have that thought. You're going to have those emotions that's connected with it where you're already, already feeling defeated about it. Then after those emotions comes the action, which is going to be no action because you'd already think that you're not going to achieve it. Mm -hmm. So everybody with your $49 um, product <laughs> oh, and you have your $100,000 goal, it's achievable. But just look at each month how many do you have to sell each month in order to be on the right track? Don't think that you're going to sell a million and it's already November and think yeah. <laughs> and you've been selling like one or two each month. Um, but, but that's really I mean, good. Um, be Renee. You have to look at it. I mean, $49 to get to a six figure income. I mean, how many of those $49 products are you going to have to sell a month? just to get to let's say a hundred thousand dollars a year which is not much nowadays so a hundred thousand dollars a year and is that number realistic for you to do every month if not then you're one probably not pricing your product correctly because you probably offer more value than what you're giving it to um you know you're selling it for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what about you marcia what do you think um how do how do you suggest uh individuals set realistic goals in order to achieve success um, in their life? So I, I use, um, I go, I start with the SMART goals. They definitely have to be specific, have to do with the time frame and measurable. And um, I work with clients, not just, uh, I don't specifically work in business. I mean, I'm from a business, I have a business background, but I work with um, women who are going through changes, right? So a goal could be a mindset change, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going through a divorce and I, I'm losing, I'm losing my mind. I don't know how to, I don't know how to do this. I, you know, every time I see him, I, you know, my ex, I, I get upset. And so a goal for that person may be, what can we do to work on to change your reaction? Cause it's so easy to react and not be proactive. And when you're not making decisions about how you want to show up for a situation, whether it's in a business or in a personal situation. Um, it, it, when you make up your mind how you want to show up and how you want to be, it's very, very empowering. So I do work with SMART goals. I, I work with the clients and I say to them, what is, we, we, we call it aim SMART, right? So what is the acceptable minimum that you think you can do between week to week? What, what, what's the minimum? What's the maximum? What's your stretch? And what could you live with? Mm -hmm. And why is this a stretch? And absolutely, your thoughts dictate, you know, it all starts with the thought. If you feel that you, if you believe that you can't, then you won't. Mm -hmm. So um, I, we have, um, I work with um, clients on energy levels and um, I do assessments with clients. Uh, I have an assessment called an ELI index, which you can look at where your energy levels are and it's really your attitude that you're bringing to a situation and it's based on perceptions and thoughts and all of your experiences and we we go up and down energy levels all day long and of course the 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 negative ones um there's seven levels but the two sort of lower ones they hold us back we get angry something bad happens it's a, it's um we can feel like a victim but it's deciding again with our thoughts how long we want to stay in that place. And then once we, once we think about how we want to be consciously and we make conscious, aware decisions, then we'll get the emotions and the actions. So it is about controlling your mindset and setting realistic goals and understanding inside really what we want, how fast we want to move and, and what are the goals and where do we want to go? And, and it's, it's iterative. I mean, I think, 
I think you can you can say you want to make a hundred thousand and in three months and you can consciously decide to run an experiment mm -hmm. and say, I'm going to try to make, you know, X amount a month and my, my profit margin, I'm, I'm trying, you know, I'm going to make X income, but my margin's going to be 10% and I'm going to try it for three months and I'm going to see how it goes. And then I'm going to reevaluate. So that's another way that, again, it's all in how the client wants to approach it. And, and I brainstorm with clients. And again, it depends on what the success is that they're going for, whether it's the 20 pounds or even making a decision moving forward. You know, I want to start a new career. Not sure if I can. Is it the right time? I have, you know, kids depending on me. The money's not there. I should be thinking about retirement, you know, all of these things. And again, it's just raising our consciousness about it, particularly when we're thrown into situations because life happens and it's so natural for all of us just to react, right? To just take it and then just react as opposed to saying with a coach, okay, this is what's happening. How can I take everything that I'm being faced with and make very conscious decisions about it and not necessarily think that they're all roadblocks or that I have blocks. And even though things aren't in the timing that I want, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen the way I want. And, and many times everything is a process, building a business is a process and being patient sometimes is the goal <laughs> because it's hard to be patient, you know? Um, but I agree, it has to be, you know, you need to work with someone. If you're working with a coach, that's going to stretch you, that's going to challenge your thought process. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, when a client sets a goal, I don't set the goal. Um, I brainstorm the client has to come from the client because we're going to be more invested in a goal that we set. Okay. ourselves as opposed to well if you're trying to get here you should you should do these things and so really it's a lot of the client um deciding and me challenging you know well how does that feel to you is that where you want to go what might get in the way you know what do you need what kind of remind you know do you need yet to put stickies up to remind you what what your vision is vision is and so it's all sorts of strategizing again to specific measurable actionable, go actionable goals and also working with that mindset. Because again, as D. Renee said, if you don't have the mindset, if you're not in a positive, creative, everything's an opportunity mindset, then you're already creating roadblocks to hold you back. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and I, I, I agree uh, with, um, I, I agree with Marcia. Um, it depends on what coaching are you providing? You know, mm -hmm. if you're providing like a people service changing, for instance, I, you know, like my transformational life coaching, I think she said she works with um, women who are going through changes and things like that. You can, you can implement those small goals. You can implement those, you know, people oriented feeling behaviors type of um, goals. But when you're talking about success in a business, I don't believe you get in business to try. I, get, I believe you get in business to succeed and that's what most people do. And you have to stretch yourself and you have to, you know, you have to push yourself. You don't get into business to try. You gotta, mm -hmm. when you invest, because business is an investment, mm -hmm. you have to go full out and you have to play full out because if you're not gonna do that, then what is the point? And, and, and well, go ahead. Playing full out is very important. I think yeah. what I was trying to say is in business, you're playing full out, but you may try a marketing strategy that doesn't work. You yeah, may, absolutely. So, so from a business perspective, as you're kind of going the, through the four P's, you know, of marketing, product, price, place, promotion, you're <laughs> going to experiment with those that different type, right? You have a budget, you're going to spend X amount on Facebook, and you're going to do X number of presentations. Well, you're going to get feedback in terms of what is working and what's not what's not working. So I think in that way, uh, business is very much, um, you know, experiment because we, we don't know and you don't, until you put that product out there and you try mm -hmm. certain things, you, you need to be receptive to what's coming back and be able to be malleable enough to change based on how you're stretching to make that 100,000 or whatever that number is in your business. I agree, I agree. 
and so I know that we've been talking um, just somewhat about business, but what about the actual individual? I know, Marsha, um, you did bring up those um, those women's those women who are um, divorced and how they're going to react when they do see their ex. Um, <laughs> how do you um, how do you set a realistic goal in your reaction? If you just happen to see him, I can see if maybe you guys are um, um, transferring the kids amongst each other and you know you're going to see that person. So you already tell yourself, okay, I'm not going to say anything bad to him when I see him. But when you just happen to see him in the store, you haven't trained yourself yet. You know, and so how do you get to that point where it's just a natural reaction um, that you're reacting in a way that you feel like, man, I handled that really well. You're choosing your reaction ahead of time, right? So, um, and that happens for all of us, right? In our business relationships and in our, with our parents. Um, if you, I'm remarried, I'm divorced and remarried with ex-wives and, and, you know, ex-parents and all of that. Um, in terms of relationships, um, practice, right? So you decide ahead of time who you want to be. It doesn't, you don't always hit the mark, but the intention, you set your intention of how you want to show up um, in that way, the person you want to be, it's not easy. Nothing is easy, right? But, but practice, it becomes more natural if that's something that you, you know, that you want to do. If you want to, if you, if, if being angry serves you, and sometimes for a certain period of time, people will say, you know what, right now I need to feel anger. I just do. I need, I need it. And when the client says that, and if they feel it's serving them and not cost, costing them emotionally, then stay in that place. But what I find is over time, you know, people say this isn't serving me well, because I'll ask that question. How is it serving you? How much is it costing you? Are you getting what you want out of it? You know, so, and it's divorce when there's kids, there's running into them. It's when the kids are older, you know, it, it, it's, it's all of it. So in terms of your question, it's, it's really um, deciding who you want to be, how you want to show up and then practicing and, and, and writing some, maybe you're journaling about it. Maybe you're saying, you know what, next time I see him, whether it's unplanned or planned, I'm going to put myself in a space where I'm going to breathe three times before I lose it, you know, yeah. and you put in, or you, or you wear a, an elastic around your wrist or, you, you know, you, there's all sorts of ways that you can have a visual cue to yeah. kind of click you into that mode and you see what works for you. And then eventually you can, you can do it if you want to. I think we can do anything we set our minds to anything. Definitely. No. And he's gonna be and he's gonna thing. be looking at you like you acting so different. <laughs> like, yeah. like I'm pulling I mean, on my I, wrist. <laughs> I agree exactly. I agree with um uh, with what Marcia said. You have to set your intentions. Yeah. But as a life coach and as a transformational coach, when you have people or individuals or women, for instance, that I work with, I, they go. I mean, you have to deal with the hurt. You have to deal with the emotions. You have to yeah. deal with the feelings that's connected with that traumatic event or something that has drastically changed their life, whether it's trauma, whether it's um, divorce, whether it's, um, you know, they, they lost themselves. Yes, yeah. lost a job. They lost themselves in a marriage. They don't know who they are, you know, yeah. things like that. You have to get, you have to allow them that space to be able to, heal from that hurt and that pain. And you have to be able to provide them with, you know, tools and techniques to help them to be able to change their behaviors, change their reactions, change their coping skills and how they're used to handling and dealing with that particular person and set up boundaries around their relationship. If this, if we're speaking about the divorce, but set up boundaries and set up tools and coping skills around what it is that they're hurting from so that they'll be able to respond to it differently in the future. I, I had a client after, um, just as a divorce example, um, it, it can be the same with, with anything, but, but her, her particular situation was, you know, 30 year marriage, last kid is, you know, finishing up college and 
you know, the ex wanted to get together, you know, in a restaurant with the daughter who was home from college. And she said, you know, I wasn't sure what to do. And, and so I went because I felt it was the right thing for my, it was the right thing to do. But what she noticed is she wasn't really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't feeling good to her. And we talked about that. So sometimes, you know, as D. Renee is saying, you have to experience kind of what you don't want before you decide what you do want in some of those situations. And the layoff is well, I've been laid off a couple of times in business. And, um, you know, the second time, the first time is always a shock. The second time, you know, you know, you know how, what the process is, you know, you're going to survive it, you know, you're going to find another job. And so you go in there more empowered, knowing that, you know, th I've had this experience. So therefore, I'm going to, I'm going to be professional the whole way, the whole way through. And so mm -hmm. um, it is, it's just, it's really raising your consciousness level about who you are and what you want, you know, whether it be in business or in personal or health even. Yeah. Like Marcia, what you just described, it sounds like what, with the layoff situation is that you described, you went back to those skills and those talents or whatever, those gifts that you had on the inside of you that helped you to get through it the first time so that you already knew that when you faced it again, that you would come out victorious. And so mentally you were prepared better because you reverted back to those skills that you had before to kind of help you cope and get through that. And exactly. And I'm sure your clients too, when you say, you know, if you're struggling with something, you know, or you're starting to feel that fear, the last time you felt fear and you overcame it, how did you overcome it? What did you pull on in your reserves to, to kind of get you through it? And also when you experience something for the first time, you're not, it, sometimes it isn't pretty or graceful. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. the first time wasn't, right? And someone said to me when I, was di when I got divorced, I, I think that was my first reaction is, oh my God, I don't know how to do this. And so right. said, well, why would you know? You've never been divorced, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and it's allowing the compassion and the understanding of ourselves to be human as well. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So I know and, that and we- you have to oh. validate, you have to validate their feelings because yes. everything that happens, I mean, there's a, it's a normal reaction. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to cry. It's okay to do all those things. So validating their feelings in regards to the experience that they're having or what it is that happened to them is very important because sometimes they feel like, well, I'm going crazy. No, actually, this is really normal. Right, exactly. And we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So how much of a attaining success is mental and how much do you think it's action-based <laughs> great question <laughs> there's, so many there's so many levels to that i don't know so in, my in my experience <laughs> with with failing and succeeding and setting goals and changing them throughout my life sometimes i find that it definitely is mindset. It's definitely actions. And then sometimes the stars align. <laughs> you could yeah. be doing all the right things and you're not getting traction in whatever it is. And you're, you're struggling and you're persevering and you don't understand, but you're, you're, you're doing it. And then all of a sudden, not in the timing you chose, but in some other timing, it all comes together. And, it's how, and so it's also faith. It's also the visioning and putting your and setting your intentions out, um, trusting the process, being engaged in the process, as you say, being full out and having the faith that it's going to come together. And sometimes it doesn't come together exactly the way that we intended, Definitely. but sometimes it comes together the right way anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know if you found this, the same experience uh, with that. I think with uh, Marcia, I think what you just described is, you know, the thoughts. It, mm -hmm. uh, to me, it starts with the thoughts. It's, yeah. It starts in the mind. And because that is going to determine your actions and your, well, your feelings and then your actions. Because if you don't think it, yep. 
if you are in the right headspace, like, you know, oh, I'm feeling bad. I'm not doing this. So you you think right. all, all the negative things about how bad you're feeling. Yep. So it, it, it reduces, it diminishes and reduces your opportunity to be able to put forth any action towards any goals, towards any type of success that you desire to have. I'm a cognitive behavioral therapist. That's just to the heart. I firmly believe that your mindset is vitally important to succeeding at anything, whether it's life or business. If you cannot get your thoughts right, then it's going to be very difficult to control your feelings. And out as a result of your feelings, it's going to determine your behaviors. For instance, if you think very negatively, if you say that right. you're sad, if you say that you're all these things, then guess what? You're going to begin to feel sad. And as yep. a result of you beginning to feel sad, then you're going to isolate yourself. Then you're going to not do stuff that you right. um, said that you were going to do. So as a cognitive behavioral therapist and as someone who firmly believes that everything starts in the mind, Mm -hmm. It's vitally important that we keep that in check. So even if you're yes. um, someone that's um, in business, it's, it's always because you're going to always have those moments, especially when you're stretching yourself, you're going to always have those moments to where you feel like, you know what, I don't know. And as soon as you start having thoughts like that, then you need to do those trainings and those tools. Like my business coach, um, she recommended this book called... Um, what to think, or what to say when you talk to yourself. And I just ordered it. That's like my number two um, book that I'm getting ready to read after I finish this other book that I read. Because it's important for you to build yourself up mentally because there's so much stuff out here that's going to say otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so even when you're going through um, whatever transformation that you desire to have, it's going to be important to have a mindset that you can do this. It's going to be important to have a mindset that it's possible. It's going to be important to know that even if you don't get the result that you desire to have, you try and that's good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I agree. It is the mindset and it, it's, um, I'm coming full circle to what I was thinking about earlier, which is we, you know, if you're saying I, I, I can't, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I I'm too afraid. You flip it as a so if you're saying I don't have enough time, ask flip it. How can I make more time? What are my priorities? I don't have enough money. Well, how important is having a certain amount of money? And how can you make more money? So it's really taking that negative self-talk and flipping it to a question and challenging yourself to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing too is, is that, um, so it is, it definitely starts with the mind and it sometimes ends with the mind, just a little quick, little story. So when I started my business, my daughter um, is a graphic designer and um, we've had a typical mother daughter relationship <laughs> over the years. And there was a part of me that thought, you know what, she can do my website. She can do all the design because this will bring us close together. I had this vision because sometimes we argue and it's been an up and down kind of thing. She's 29. And I thought, you know, this is going to be great. Well, we did a little bit of pre talking and we both realized it wasn't going to work. So I was disappointed. But interestingly enough, when I started to look at web designers, I was naturally, so I didn't close my mind and say, this isn't going to work. I'm not going to be able to build this connection with my daughter, like to work together on something. But again, with your mind, you change perspectives. So interestingly enough, as I was choosing web designers, I was reaching out to my graphic designer daughter and she was helping me pick a web designer and she was my consultant. Mm -hmm. So we didn't work together like exactly my vision, which was she was going to do it and we were going to be lockstep, you know, together in this project. But she was with me in a different way. She was my consultant when I was struggling with the creative process. She's creative. I struggle. She'd really bring me back down to earth and, and say, you know, it, it's part of the process. Relax. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I'd say, what do you mean a, 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 a what is it called? A something board. I don't know, vision board or whatever. And I got all nervous and she said, no, no. So, so interestingly enough, when we change our mindset, had I said, no, no, we're not, we don't work well together. End of story. 
I never would have had that wonderful benefit of working with her in a different capacity, not exactly what I, what I vision. So it really does, it is with your mind. Had, had you seen it as, had I seen it as a failure or as a hard no in the beginning, then we wouldn't have worked together. Mm-hmm. So it, it, to your point, Dee, absolutely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, know, um, I know a couple of things that really just helped me with my mindset. And it, cause you don't feel like, you're a success story every single day, but you <laughs> need right. those reminders. And so yes. um, I use, uh, I just, I have post-it notes and um, index cards. So mm-hmm. what I do is I just write affirmations and I put it on my mirror, my bathroom mm-hmm. re- mirror, cause I use that yeah. every day. And so like one of my notes says, you got this. And another one is, um, the verse from Joshua 1, 9. And it really just talks about like how God is just with you, be confident Mm -hmm. in every step of the way. And so things like that, we need to continuously feed ourselves Mm -hmm. um, things that's going to remind us, you can do this. I know when I'm I'm on the treadmill and I see this (laughs) 75 year old running still, I'm like, girl, you better come on. (laughs) Don't you stop. And, and, visual, and visualizing the success too. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you visualize that you're, if you, if you are behaving like you're already successful, you know what I mean? It also brings it apart. You, you visualize already being successful mm-hmm. and doing things as if you're already successful, as mm-hmm. if it's already there for you too. And it's that vision that you keep reigniting in your mind. Definitely. And Martinique, I think you um, brought up a great point about positive affirmations. That is one of the things that I definitely teach my clients. And I teach them to make positive affirmations based starting with these three, th- these three things. One is I can, mm-hmm. I will, and I am. Mm-hmm. And you create positive affirmations with those three things. I am, I can, and I will. And I also teach them how to flip the goals into something more positive as well to it can become a positive affirmation statement for them to continue to say and to rehearse so that they can be get into their spirit and so that they can continue to encourage themselves as they continue to implement and do things on a daily basis towards meeting their goals Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely so last question last question how do you define success in your own personal life So um, personal life, not business, right? Personal life. Mm-hmm. Okay. So <laughs> in, my, in my personal life, I would say peace. I think peace is very important, especially when you're trying to um, build a business, especially when you, um, I'm a single mother. I'm a single mother of um, two boys. Life is always fast. Life is always on the go. Mm-hmm. And so when there's heck, when it's very hectic, things are going on. I mean, just having peace is very important for me, you know, because it allows me a space to be able to create. It allows me a space to be able to give my all to my business. It allows me a space to be able to um, be creative, mm-hmm. to be able to see what it is extra that I need to implement into my business. So it allows me that mental space. It clears up that mental space for me to be more successful, to be able to play full out in the things that I need to do. Because if, again, if you're not there, if your mindset is all discombobulated and you got all these things going on, it can be very hectic and it's hard to focus and it's hard to just kind of concentrate on that because you got to deal with all this other stuff. So success for me is just being peaceful, being able to be there um, for my boys, being able to do the things that I desire to do and being able to um, help people because that's what I've always been doing. I've been a licensed therapist for 15 years and seeing that transformation, my Mm -hmm. clients, all of them over the years, Uh, with coaching as well as in counseling just seeing them go from one place to the next it I mean it brings me joy Mm -hmm. you know it's like some of my clients I'll be like oh I want to hug you you know and some of them you know it brings tears to my eyes I mean it's just so satisfying especially when you know that what you do provides a transformation Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good 
What about you, Marcia? Um, for me, success is, is balance when I feel at peace. And for me, peace means that I feel it's a feeling for me. It's a feeling of balance. So it's a balance and, and I'm aligned with what's important to me. I, I was also a single mom. So it's the things that are important to me, family. Um, um, I've always wanted to travel and now that's becoming a reality for me. So, but when I feel that things are, that I'm, I feel empowered and I'm in control of things that are even out of control, that I'm in control of myself and, and my mind, my spirit, my everything's in balance. It's just, it's more of a feeling. I feel like I'm in the right rhythm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's success to me. I think, you know, um, we're all on this individual journey. What's again, what's was successful when I was a single mom, um, trying to get into kids into college, those successes were defined at that time and they were very tangible. Um, I didn't have quite as much balance, but I was always trying to get it. I was always trying to get it. And, and so it changes, but I know what I'm always, and for me, success is being aligned and, and honoring and valuing what's important to me, regardless of what anyone else is doing or what anyone else is saying and, and, and caring less about people's judgments and, and not, not making it important and just being with myself and feeling good about that. That's so good. that's good. I like that. That's good. that's good. And guys, um, if you can also just make a comment on, you know, how do you define success in your own personal life? And that would be great. Um, this is actually the end of our show. I wish I could keep these ladies on a little bit longer, but like they said, they have lives. They want to keep, continue that balance in their life. Uh, so make sure you continue to visit the description box. Um, these ladies, their information is in there as well. Make sure that you follow them on their Facebook page. So you can always um, be notified of the different things that they have going on, um, different sessions. Um, I know that um, D. Renee goes live a lot of the times, and so you can get um, some more information um, from her, as well as um, just by visiting uh, Marsha's website um, that's in the description box as well. Make sure that you also tune in next week, um, and we're going to just discuss how to strive for excellence without the feeling of being perfect. Until next time, everyone, thank you again for tuning in, and I hope you all have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.